on. All right. So yeah, this um, we, I've had so many meetings this week, but uh, had the three presentations yesterday. So, all right. So, what is your uh, favorite uh, movie, book, or story about combat? And uh, here's some suggestions you might. <laughs> <laughs> Men and tights. That's an old one too. Three musketeers. I'm glad my favorite Pat was on there. Yeah, Pat. Yeah. 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 Um, well, I like Patton, but I gotta I gotta do an other too. We were soldiers once and young. And the reason for that is there's so much character in there that was in one of my classes years ago, many years ago. I have to start somewhere. What do you think I should read? All right, let's see. Uh, anybody else have any other? Gladiator. Say, pardon, was that? Gladiator. Gladiator. Ah, uh, yes. A movie on the Battle of uh, Normandy. Oh, D Day? Yeah. D Day, yes. Yeah, that was a good one, too. Yeah. You know, my father was in World War II, and he and I, before he passed, we went to see Saving Private Ryan. So that one's special to me because I went with him. But uh, the beginning of that movie and all of that with he really said was pretty authentic so uh, uh saving private ryan probably for oh, me dear. that was a good one he didn't know till the end who was yeah, yeah. Uh, all right uh how do you protect your home from danger cameras <laughs> I have an alarm system. <laughs> yeah, that way you can see who's coming in with your camera. I don't know what how it protects you, but you can see who's coming. <laughs> well, I guess I'll give you a little warning anyway. Oh, yeah. who's? I guess see who's coming or see who was there. One of the two. How do you respond to the idea that there are spiritual forces in the universe that are working against God's will? What are your thoughts about that? Pray. Hey. Call the devil. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Uh, uh, some of the commentaries talked about this uh, with a different emphasis on that. So uh, we'll see how the conversation goes. Um, it's more evident today than it's ever been before. Yeah, at least, I like, at least in my lifetime. Or well, I'll say, how? Yeah, I, I would, I would agree with that. I, I don't know whether before it was just uh, hidden and uh, people were more uh, uh, reluctant to show their uh, true colors, I guess, because it wasn't much accepted by society. I, but uh, yeah. Okay, Rick, here's uh, your intro part. Hi, here we go. In last week's session, we continued to focus on relationships and how we should treat one another with honor and respect. Children are, are, are to honor and obey their parents, and employees are to respect their employers and work for Christ and his glory. This week, we will learn how to arm ourselves against the enemy of our souls. Paul concludes his book with some essential teaching on how a Christian is to find the capacity to imitate God, to walk in the light and to maintain unity by using the spiritual armor of God himself. Using an analogy of the armor and weaponry used by Roman soldiers, Paul explains that every Christian has a complete set of spiritual armor with, with, with which to fight against the devil and his allies. Read. Ephesians 10, or 6, 10 through 24 and note the importance of prayer and spiritual warfare. All right, thanks, Rick. And here's us for you, Steve. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. 
for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I may I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Okay, any initial comments or thoughts on this? It's like a coach's pregame rah-rah speech, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 So, the, yeah, that's what would be. And uh, as I got to looking at this, I don't know why that this chapter, uh, I mean, this last lesson, this is actually the next to last lesson, but I looked and there's only like two verses left. So, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next week, but the um, way they divide it up. But yeah, this is kind of a, a summary of. Uh, kind of what he's, he's talking about there and we'll hopefully bring that out in the discussion a little bit but so here here he is he's kind of wrap, wrapping it up and here he, that is kind of uh, rick that was a good analogy so uh, all right we've had all this training and we've gone through all this uh, stuff this uh, background and you're, you're a child of god now and uh, so here you go this is what you're going to encounter so be prepared so uh Anyway, so so I'm going to take some of these uh, first questions to uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, well, kind of help us uh, understand or focus on the structure of what Paul's doing here, and then uh, some of the other. We'll get into some more uh, typical questions. So in verse ten, it says, "Finally, be strong in the Lord and His mighty power." If verse 10 is kind of the heading of this section or the goal of this section, what might be the means of achieving that goal? Faith. Well, that's a good answer. That's not the one I'm looking for. Would say taking these as words of truth in our marching orders. Yeah, okay, this is a little simpler than what uh, what I was looking for on the structure of, of how he, he wrote this. So if you go look at verse 10 sets a goal, then uh, what about how would, uh, what in verse 11 would be the means of achieving that? Put it on full armor. It, you know, some of the commentaries I read basically broke it, us down as human beings. As, uh, many of the items that we're discussing today are defensive uh, against Satan, and one of them is offensive, and that's excluding prayer. But we look at the pieces of the armor that he's talking about. All of them are pretty much defensive in nature except for one. Right. All right, well, you jumped way ahead there, but... Uh... I could pass well, you asked the question. I, I sh <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Time to cover those last two verses. So, are we We're done? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Gary, Gary kind of covered it, and we'll, we'll kind of go back and uh, uh, fill in. Uh, are, are we done now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the um, so the. If this is the first, again, that's probably what the way I was trying something different on the questions, but we'll, we'll continue as if he didn't spoil the ending. <laughs> uh, you notice I was quiet for quite a while, but I just could not hold it in. Yeah. 
So, um, so how do we achieve that goal? And in, in, uh, in verse 11, the first part, he talks about putting on the full armor of God is the, uh, what I was kind of looking for. And why, why should we put on the, oh, this is the next question. What is the purpose of putting on the full armor of God? The last so, part of it. So, yeah. so that we can stand our ground. Yeah, so the, take your stand against the devil's feet. So you see how this is kind of going. So what is the problem according to verse 12? Spiritual problem, not a flesh and blood. Right. right. Yeah. All right, Daryl's getting the direction here, so. Okay. Uh, I didn't want to spoil it like Gary. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you, you, you know you can you can probably edit this recording so it doesn't spoil it for people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I should have said spoiler. <laughs> yeah. No, that's okay. How does uh, verse 13 repeat the issue and the means of achieving the goal? You need to prepare. Right. Put on the full armor and uh, when the day, let's see how many more of these questions I have so we can get into something. Well, and full is a big word there. I mean, you can, if you only put on one piece of the armor, you're not going to be safe. You got to, you got to have full armor of God. Right. And you know, I'll, I'll go out. so. So the uh, repeats put in the full armor of God so that when the day comes, you may be able to stand your ground. That's what the purpose is. And so what's the, what's the commitment that he's calling for in verse uh, 13, part of 14? And firm. Stand firm, yes, thanks. Okay, so I think I'm done with this series of uh, difficult questions. <laughs> <laughs> the rest are true or false. Right, yeah. <laughs> In ver verse 10, it says, be strong. So there was quite a bit of discussion on this and some of the, and the commentary, but so how are we to do that? How are we to be strong? Be prepared through prayer. Uh, again, that's uh, right, but you jump to the end. He <laughs> <laughs> give us a hint how not to jump to the end. Okay, how, how about the verse 10, it says be strong. So how are we to do that? Verse 10. Put on the full armor of God. Uh, no, that's a little bit. That's <laughs> Explain the full armor of God. Yeah, but uh, well, he goes on to explain the full armor of God. So I guess there was, um, you know, Dwight, when your mother used to say, how was school today? <laughs> I'd say, oh, that teacher didn't know what he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if asking me all the questions, yes. <laughs> all right. So I guess whether the... Uh, the question is uh, maybe not as obvious to you. So be stronger. So we, we is Paul telling us to be strong just <coughs> by ourselves to work out? Uh, no, let's be with the Lord. Right. Trust. This, right. The Lord is the source of our, our strength. That's what, so the be strong is not uh, something that we're able to do by, uh, working out and and uh, so that's be strong in the lord it's god is the source of the power uh did i have i think there's one thing that's kind of key here is that 
he's given us the awareness how to be strong. And then it's our choice to engage to be strong. Right. But obviously through Christ. Yeah, and I think the, the Phillips translation uh, spelled it out a little bit better. So be strong. And then he goes, not in yourselves, but in the Lord, in the power of his boundless resource. And the, uh, the other part about this is, is uh, the, the verb in the Greek or, or whatever it was uh, originally is, a, is not just be strong once, it's an ongoing strength. So... Like I said, I think uh, the, the J.B. Phillips translation is uh, kind of had it uh, a little bit closer to what Paul's trying to say here. Not in yourselves, but in the Lord. So it's not, it's not on your own strength, but on the strength you get from, uh, from God. So what connection do you, if any, do you see? And I, again, I said this, this passage is kind of the... Uh, a summary of a lot of what Paul's talking about, as uh, Rick said, it's kind of the uh, the pep talk before he's, he closes the letter. So, what connection, if any, do you see between Ephesians four twenty four, where it says, "And to put on new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness," and verse eleven. Well, it's pretty, uh, in verse 424, it says, put on the new self. And here it says, put on the full armor of God. So this, I thought there was a tie there. But obviously, there's not as close a tie as I thought. But anyway, so. The so new self might be, it's important you communicate. One thing is, to, this is communicating to God. And you got to, uh, God wants you to communicate with him. That's the new self. Is it? That isn't like when you think of him, it's every day. Right. But here's something, well, put on this uh, this gift, new self, full suit of, suit of armor uh, was, um, was part of our, our new self. And I'm, I'm kind of wondering whether you would uh, interpret this as a, uh, a uniform. They didn't have missiles. Oh, and the missiles. Yeah, they didn't have any missiles back then. Yeah. Well, the other, the other kind of an aside that uh, that they said that uh, maybe part of the reason that Paul used this analogy is that he was likely in prison, and they they did chain him to a a, a Roman soldier, even though he was in prison, to make sure he didn't get away. I guess. Yeah. So that's probably why he was sitting there writing one day and feeling inspired by God and looks over and sees this guy standing next to him, chained to him, 24-7. Uh, and uh, so he starts going, well, full armor of God. So how much of our armor should we have on at all times, according to verse 13? All of it. Oh, ah, yeah. See, see, see oh, how yeah. easy these questions are. Full armor, God. So don't leave without your helmet or your breastplate or. What is the first piece of armor mentioned in uh, fourteen? Belt of truth. And they gave the. Uh, the illustration too about the the uh, the belt of truth buckled around your waist and how the and we I think we talked about this briefly in the uh, the prodigal son uh, thing is that the the father in the prodigal son when he sees his son afar off and he starts running towards him he had on long robes so he must have taken it up and tied it around his waist. Um, 
so that he could run. And so this is talking to many times before they went into battle, they would uh, well, cinch up their belt or pull their robe up and so they could uh, have more flexibility or ability to run or fight or move. So what kind of shoes uh, should the warrior or God wear? Air Jordans? I don't know. Uh. <laughs> Gospel shoes. Gospel uh. shoes. Gospel of peace. So uh, why do we need these shoes? Doesn't say it specifically in there, but great commission. Right, right. That you got So we can get, carry the gospel out to, to, to others. Um, what do your feet look like when we are bringing the, the good tidings of the gospel of peace? And I think I'm adding this right here. But uh, And while this is kind of answer, I didn't, I, I, I was supposed to uh, break that. But in, I, a lot of uh, what uh, some of these things Paul's talking about are, are from uh, Isaiah. <laughs> And like Isaiah 52, 7 says, how beautiful are the, on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. So again, that's uh, the shoes are help, help uh, spread the gospel. And I think I don't know whether I have a question on this bring it up again four times in Ephesians uh, 11 through 14 Paul urges his readers to stand firm in the battle against the devil's uh, stratagems how are we susceptible to instability as Christians Are you talking about giving into the flesh? Yeah, that would be part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Satan never gives up. I mean, we are we're of the flesh, like Steve mentioned, and uh it, it's not easy every day. When we talk about the arrows of Satan, uh he's that those start the minute you get out of bed in the morning. So yeah, uh, we are susceptible. If we give in, if we don't hold all these truths and with our faith and uh, we become more and more susceptible to Satan. He knows your, he knows your weaknesses and he'll go yeah. right for it. Yeah, that's right. So, and, and, you know, this other passages, I think I shared uh, a few times ago about uh, Satan uh, goes around like a roaring lion to see who might de de devour. Um, but I think the one, it was interesting to me as I read a lot of these, uh, a couple of commentaries uh, talked about, you know, Satan is active and, and his demons are, uh, are real. But then the, another commentator said, well, you know, we, we really don't need to worry about this because uh, uh, Christ uh, conquered uh, Satan. Uh, we won the battle and everything else. And and to me, as he was going through that and kind of minimizing uh, the the impacts of, of Satan on uh, on us, or the Satan's in the world, and or it's just a, a sense of evil in the world. Um, I thought he kind of minimized what Paul's kind of saying here. It kind of took away the. Uh, that you know, this is really uh, something uh, you should be concerned or should be aware of, not dwell on it, not focus on it uh, as much, but you need to be aware that you need to be prepared, you need this armor, you need these things talked about here. So, um, I, I don't know what how your feelings are on that. I mean, Gary, like what Gary said, or, or like what this one commentator kind of was alluding to is that. The battle's won, so don't be concerned about Satan at all. 
But is the battle won? Is the battle ever over? I, I think it, it's constant. Yeah, I, you know, I use this a lot. I mean, this is not, when we work with these young guys that are members of gangs, this is one thing we teach them and to turn themselves around. I don't agree with that commentator at all. I think when I get up in the morning, uh, every, every bit of each one of these pieces of armor is a, an analogy to something that we're going to face that day. And uh, we got to, whether that, you know, that armor is uh, just what it is, symbolic, it, uh, we need to understand it day to day. Satan, you know, one thing God gave us is the freedom of choice. Uh, right. Most of these kids we deal with have made the wrong choices. And they need to find their way out of that. And that's by understanding this armor. Once they understand the armor, they'll be better. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I mean, I was just, it, uh, you know, as I, sometimes you read these commentaries and you're going, where the hell did that come from? So, anyway. Well, the Bible tells us that the flesh is weak. And uh, yeah. we know that. I think the, even the first piece of the armor of God is truth. And with truth, we're the guardians of our mind. And therefore, we actually have to stand and act as consciously almost like a filter is to say, oh, are those thoughts really of God that I should be dwelling on or should I throw them out? And because as soon as we start dwelling on what's not of God, the other pieces of armor, if they're intact, they may become susceptible. Right. It's kind of looking uh, like the devil's roaming around looking for the, the weak spot, like your Achilles heel or something, you know. So um, yeah. that's why you need to get covered. I, I think one time we talked about uh, when we went through this about why there's no, it has, talks about a breastplate, but there's nothing on your back. Is, Anybody from the old school remember why we said it seems like our back's unprotected? Uh, guess. I got your back. Yeah, that, that, no, that, no, that, no, that's it. That was it, Gary. That's what we talked about. Is that uh, yeah, you need need to know that you're not not alone and that uh, your your brother's got your back. So yeah, uh, I thought that was something that we we took when we. We've been over this passage uh, before, and I don't remember whether we were in Ephesians or we just pulled this out for some reason. Could the commentator have meant in that particular phrase when he said the battle is over, meaning that Christ died for us, and therefore the battle is over as long as you recognize what it is and live it that way? Yeah. No, I think we, we just get... Um, there's a lot of uh, things that talks about how Satan is still is active and can still uh, attack you and if you let your guard down. And I, I think that's uh, a, a lot of times, uh, and we've talked about this before too, is that we need to learn to be able to discern what the voice of God is versus what uh, something that we just think of ourselves or that the 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 Satan's kind of uh, tempting you with something. So uh, again, he he really can't uh, read your mind so much, but I I think he, he has some influence uh, there on uh, tempting us with things. So we never can be complacent. We must we must be focused at all times. Right, and that's agree, and I think it's kind of what Paul's saying here. Don't uh, don't leave the house without your armor. So, and it, okay, what do you think? Why do you? What do you think faith in verse sixteen means? They think God to help you right. when the battle comes. And I think we talked about the, the shield before too. I mean, this 
it's kind of referencing that the uh, the shields were uh, extremely heavy they're made of wood um, they were wrapped in leather uh, they had uh, uh, maybe some metal on the top and the bottom but then they were also before they went into battle they would soak the shields in water I can't imagine how heavy that would be then um, but uh, so it would extinguish the flaming arrows when they came into got into the shield at the shield so um, you had to be a, a, I, I would think the well those warriors must have been pretty strong the shields and and the swords uh, so again so, I think you know, don't you think a lot of this is symbolic about shields and all of that and I the story I read in relation to this is David and Goliath David had no shield he had no helmet he had nothing but he had the armor of God and he and he defeated Goliath because of that right well and I think we all regarding that story too I mean the, the sling was a, a very uh a viable weapon. I mean, they had uh, uh, squads of uh, those sling throwers on the stone, so it was it was not as if he didn't have anything. But God still helped him uh, conquer that giant. But uh, I think it's uh, Kevin, uh, if he was here today, would be talking about that too about the sling. I can't remember which book it is. One of Malcolm Gladwell's books talks about uh, he was one of the first engineers, David because he had engineered an, a, a better weapon instead of heavy shields and heavy swords. And, and uh, he was like, we've continued to make better weapons in our lives, but he was way ahead of time. And he stood there and had the faith in God. And uh, he engineered that the way that could kill Goliath without anything they'd ever used before. Well, I say I heard that differently. So I heard that that the sling, that was a, a viable weapon. Like I said, they were squads of uh, people that had those. But again, he was very adept in it, whether he made it himself, because he was, when he was out watching those sheep, I mean, he would out, use that sling to uh, uh, kill wolves and other animals that would be coming to uh, attack his sheep. So. I think that's true. But when you're facing a giant, I think that was probably a little different. Well, no, I, I agree. <laughs> It certainly would be intimidating. Most people would be going, uh, I, this guy is nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And keep in mind, the king tried to give him his shield and all of his armor, and David said no. Yeah. You can't fight with this. Yeah, because I, I picture that oh, oh, David was like probably a teenager, but uh, I'm sure the armor was like a little kid in his dad's clothes. You ever used to dress up? Like... <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, as an old football coach, when you used to put those shoulder pads on these little, little guys and wanted to play, you always used to say, you sure you want to play this game? Yeah. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't find any equipment for him. <laughs> yeah. uh, explain what you think the flaming arrows of the evil one are and how faith can extinguish them. Well, my experience is those arrows are deterrents so something that you're trying to do for God. And I, I, I feel that all the time, by the way. I, uh, when we're trying to do something and everything in the book, uh, even the small things pop up and those are those arrows. Like, And we refer to it in our group, our mentors, is that God's throwing his arrows at us today. Uh, God or Satan? Not God, but Satan. Sorry. Yeah. No, and I think, yeah, we've also, um, uh, some, I, I think, and uh, uh, Greg will share this, I'm sure some of the others of it too, and and can even with uh, some of the things your daughters have. Uh, anytime we're off to do a mission trip or, or something uh, good for God or Habitat for Humanity or or whatever you're doing that sometimes, uh, I mean, most of the times I think Satan will try and throw up little roadblocks or those flaming arrows to kind of uh, deter you or discourage you or, or in some ways uh, 
take away what joy you might think you anticipate in, in uh, pursuing that. But uh, until you finally uh, get, get there and get it done. I think there's one comment here. You could say the second half of this, where it talks about how faith can just extinguish them. So our belief that Jesus has already done everything and he's won the battle is where we stand to, you could say, in being strong and courageous and victorious because Jesus has already done everything. No, I think that's right. And I think sometimes we forget that. So that, that's, that can discourage us when we forget that, Ken, that the, the, the battle's already won. I mean, the, the war's already won. Uh, Satan mm -hmm. operates with a lot of patience, too. I would tell you, the patience is he hits us with little tiny things that uh, that are discouragement. And, you know, I thought a lot through this, through the past couple, two, two and a half weeks now, uh, with Debbie's accident. Uh, you know, a person without faith going through this would be uh, much different than uh, a person, you know, with faith. Without faith, uh, you know, you sit around and under, can't understand why God would do this to somebody or uh, all the things you go through without faith. And uh, and then when you do that, by the way, Satan's got a hold of you. And so uh, we've continued. We even had the discussion last night about there's something good happening because of this, not something that's uh, not good and uh, and have the faith that, of recovery. So. I think Satan gets in our way. A lot of times we don't even know it. We just, if we have to think about it a little to know that, that he's there, he's there every day. Right. And a lot of time, well, and that kind of ties in too, Gary, to what, uh, I can't, whether it was Paul that said it or something, you know, what, what, uh, Satan intended for evil, God made turned into something good. So, yeah. So what do you think the helmet of salvation refers to? Verse 17, it says, uh, seven, oh, I know what. Yeah, this one's just a little different. I, I copied the wrong translation the first time. Embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance. Uh, let me go back here a minute. Yeah. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the God, of the Lord, of God. The, the helmet protects the truth from, from lies, according to the, right. <coughs> according to that verse. Yeah. I, would. I, you know, this is not, I didn't try to cheat today, but this is what I, I went through each one of these with the, these guys I work with. The helmet of salvation, it is, it, for the head, it is very important. <laughs> it's a, a sign of knowledge and the plans of having salvation with God. Don't reject God. Uh, you know, what I have over here in the slide, oh, uh, it's also that, you know, being saved is the fact what you're saying, uh, Dwight, that we have already won that war, have knowledge of that, and then also, you know, practice it, that you're, you've been saved. So have the knowledge that you have been saved. Right. I th yeah, I think that that's, that's really important. And all the things we've talked about, the battles won. And I know sometimes, well, for me, um, you know, I know I've been saved. My salvation is secure, but, you know, Occasionally, when or maybe more often than that, for me, uh, screw up. You think, wow, you know, why does God still love me? And so, but we we know that and we hear that and we just have to embrace and uh, um, believe in in that that God still loves us, even though we may be struggling. He's still there. So. So how did, I think we're kind of talking about this too, this kind of the same question. Uh, unless anybody has anything else to add to it. How does the helmet of salvation protect you from evil attacks? 
and it's kind of well again i think of the uh uh what is it the avengers or something that's one guy that had mind control but if he had a a special helmet on he couldn't get get through and uh, control your mind maybe this is where the the marvel comics got that reading this passage <laughs> this helmet uh, protects you from the evil attacks from anyway never mind <laughs> what'd you learn in school today <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, the, the command in verse 18 says, embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance like a helmet to protect your thoughts from lies and take the mighty razor sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of God. And again, that's, I think that's, this is from the Passion Translation. I don't know why I copied the last part of this in a different version, but anyway. Um, so the command in verse 18 is both a continuation of the armor which protects Christians from evil and a description of his manner of warfare. Remember that the sword of the spirit is both offensive and defensive. Why do you think Paul wraps up his discussion of the full <laughs> with this command in verse 18? So I have a question about that. It's to remember that the sword of the spirit is both offensive and defensive. Some of the commentaries just say offensive. So is if you carry this sword and you really carry it with all the intentions provided from God, who's defensive? Satan? No. I thought the offensive is how we're supposed to be sharing the word of God and yeah. uh, Defensive would be using the word of God to uh, fend off Satan's attacks. And I get, yeah, you're probably, we're saying the same thing, but I think yes. if I'm Satan and I see you carrying that razor sharp sword of faith in God, then it's defensive to me as Satan, because I'm probably going to say, okay, I'll, I'll come, I'll come attack this guy another day. The day he's not carrying the sword. Right. Yeah, I think that, yeah, the, the fact that it's offensive, and again, uh, I think uh, whether we, we go out and we're uh, <clears throat> demon slayers or something, I'm not sure, but uh, it's got a dual purpose. So why do you think he wraps it up with this uh, full armor of God? Wraps up the discussion with this verse 18. Maybe we kind of talked about that. So. I mean, it, to me, it's almost like he's giving you a, uh, this is your training. You know, get into the word of God. It's not passive. You need to continually be in the word of God if you're going to fight these battles, you know, with God. Right. And I think he's even given you truths. And now he's telling you, <clears throat> it's kind of along the lines of, there are times we do have to be defensive, but I think it is, as you're saying, to be offensive in this, because even going back to the Israelites back in Joshua, um, he told them to be strong and courageous, to listen to the words of his servants, do them, things would go well to keep that his words wouldn't depart from their lips or their mind and to do them and things would go well. And I mean, and obviously they went uh, and took down the walls of Jericho, not in their own strength, but in God's strength. We have the power actually over Satan. You know, we can, with the full armor, you have the power to say, flee from me. If, if you don't have that full armor on is when he can attack. Um, and that's what you have to be very careful about because that's, that's his um, way of getting to you. And I think what this is saying is you put that full armor on, like Steve talked about, and you have the word, 
you can be stronger than the devil at that point. Yeah, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. So, um, but again, I think that's, uh, Daryl, that's a, a, a good point that sometimes uh, we forget. And I think, um, I don't want to make any other movie references, but I think you need to have on the full armor before, if you think just because you're saved that you can go up against uh, Satan or his demons without having all this, your full armor on, uh, you're going to be in trouble. I think it's kind of what he's talking about here. So, yeah. Another way of saying, don't let your guard down, you know. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So when are we told to pray according to uh, this last part here? Constantly. Constantly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. How are we told to pray? Uh, that's kind of the same question, isn't it? Yeah. Passionately. Passionately. Oh, how'd I get to? What do you think is the main reason why many Christians pray so little and so rarely? I'm sure this doesn't apply to any of you here, but. Too many distractions. Yeah, I think that's. Well, okay. they're in a, if you're in a comfort zone, why do you need to pray? That's what they think. I, I, I'm not saying that's right, but I'm, you know, I, I see that in our Christians, our church going Christians. Uh, if they have a tragedy or a trauma, uh, you can bet you they're praying. In fact, uh, I've never seen so many prayers <laughs> that I didn't think probably prayed from Debbie's injury. I, I wonder how much they pray about everything else, but which I appreciate the prayers, but I, I will tell you that if we're in a comfort zone, uh, we probably don't get up every morning and say, well, I, want, I need to thank God for my blessings and I need to ask, you know, for repentance of my sins. Oh yeah, I, I want to do that constantly and every day. No, probably don't because, uh, you know, I'm in a comfort zone, but when I'm in an uncomfortable zone, then you turn to God. I, and that's a standard. I think that probably when that question why do you think is that man's reason why many Christians pray so little is that they're not uncomfortable enough yet? No, and I think that's right. I mean, I think that's kind of what life's taught me too. I think uh, uh, too many people uh, uh, turn to prayer as a last resort when it shouldn't yeah. be where we start. God's not the last resort. He should be, we should be in constant communication with him and not just wait, oh, well, I don't know. The doctors aren't working. It's not working. Maybe we need to be praying. So, you know, that's what you need to do at the first. That's the first resort. So, uh, and again, I heard uh, it was uh, uh, another guy, a, a guy I listened to, uh, Dutch Sheets, and uh, he was uh, <clears throat> talking about praying and he said and about the power of prayer. And he said, if you need to be praying. He's talking about praying constantly. And he says, even as you're driving, don't close your eyes, of course, but uh, need to be praying as you uh, pass a school. You need to pray that God's spirit descends on that school, that he protects those children. They need to be praying constantly because prayer does make a difference. And you can uh, uh, pray the power of the Holy Spirit in, into these things and into people. And he talked a lot about, and, and we've talked about this some too, is that uh, when God will, will give you uh, uh, some indication about, you know, you need to go talk to that person and that type of thing, is we need to take those opportunities and act upon those when we hear God tell us to do those things. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess if you reach an old age and just find out, uh, wow, you need to be praying constantly. And again, why Paul's talking about here too. So, why did Paul ask the Ephesians to pray for him? Chain prisoner. Pardon? 
He's a chain pr prisoner. Yeah, I don't think he was. Uh, uh, yeah, oh, uh, yeah. But I, I don't think he was praying that uh, he'd be released or anything else. What, what was he? Uh, He's a sinner. Well, that that too. He wanted basically that he would be encouraged to share the gospel. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that's a point. He wasn't praying for his own well-being. He's praying that his, he can continue to uh, uh, get the message out. Okay, let me uh, go to the other things first. The some things to think about. And it's a, a long narrative here, and and again, it's uh, things I, I picked from some commentaries, and I thought oh, I think this is the one that's not so much. Uh, <laughs> about Satan, but let me let me read through that and see if you have any comments on that. So on finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. The command to be strong in the Lord presumes that God is eager and willing to provide strength and that any lack of strength results from our neglect. It assumes that also assumes also that empowering is not automatic, but comes as we seek a closer relationship with Christ. It is a choice we make about the relative importance of life with Christ. This command also assumes that we need strength. For all its joys, life is hard and full of difficulties, challenges, and traps. Some of these come from illness and death, some from what other people do, and some from our own egos. Whatever circumstance, however, life in Christ requires our entire being. Both the standard and the challenge are lofty, but so is the help. The strength supplied is the strength of God's own spirit. If you seek a religion to make you comfortable, despite all its focus on peace and benefit, Christianity is not it. There is no religion for the weak or the lazy. Passive Christians cannot do the will of God. The very label passive Christian is an oxymoron. A battle is going on. And contrary to our deception, we do not live on neutral turf. We either live for God or against him. The choices we make either reflect God's character or the character of sin. As Leon Morris points out, you can drift into sin, but not into righteousness. Drift into sin, but not into righteousness. For most of us, this means our goal is wrong. We seek a carefree life. It does not exist. Our conceptions of life and especially of retirement must change. Life goal, life's goal is not on Golden Pond and Christians are not called to tranquility. We're called to peace, yes, but peace in the midst of struggle. The peace does not render us in that that makes us ready to do God's will. We need most of all a sense of urgency and awareness of the conflict and the sense of our own danger. Yet many of us are guilty of fraternizing with the enemy. If driving defensively is necessary in our cars, surely keeping alert and avoiding error are necessary in life. Most of what is far from hazardous, far more hazardous than driving a car. Christian living requires attention. Pay attention. One of the ingredients for Christian living is a balanced perspective on evil. On one hand, evil cannot be taken lightly. The destructive power against which we need vigilance. On the other hand, evil and its personalities are obvious frauds. According to the New Testament, Satan is more than annoyance than a, is is more an annoyance than a great overpowering force. The threat of danger exists, but this enemy is defeated, not in control, and is limited in power. Does God fear evil or the devil? The thought is ludicrous. But the armor of God uses to defeat evil is given to us. Why should we fear? We should experience courage for living because the enemy has been defeated. Yeah, this was the author that was uh, focusing on that. But I, I thought the first part, building up that last uh, last paragraph there, was uh, pretty good. But there, I, I thought he kind of uh, minimized Satan, which I, I don't don't I don't agree with. Any other any comments on this? You know, uh, uh, yeah, I you, when we copy, we record this, you know, every uh, week. 
uh, without saying who we uh, used uh, to have this recording put on, but I have to check a box that says that gives them permission to edit anything they want on our Bible study. And every once in a while, I will get an email from them saying, do not use this phrase anymore, uh, or we'll have to discontinue, you know, allowing you to copy. And the one that comes to mind, I don't remember what it was, but a ways back we had, we used the uh, term uh, spiritual warfare. Now I'll probably get an email on this because <laughs> I said it. But spiritual warfare was something they did not want us to use anymore in our recordings. So to me, that's Satan speaking to me right there. Uh, that uh, we're meeting as a group, studying the Bible. The Bible's the truth. The Bible, there, there's nothing new. Everything's in the Bible, except for we don't know when Jesus is coming back. That's about it. Right. But yet we have this... Uh, media that we use that uh, tells us what we can say and can't say when it comes to that, uh, which that's Satan to me uh, 100% uh, when that happens to us. Interestingly, and I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't bring this up, but because I'll probably take it off, but don't you think it's interesting that we can still use the praying hands with Facebook and all the different emojis that are praying hands that are black and white and yellow, and uh, they've never taken that off. So you can put that in your emails, uh, but they haven't uh, taken it away. So, Rob, no, I think, go ahead. I, I clearly think, Gary, that people that, that do this, they look at specific words, and they obviously have no idea what in reference spiritual warfare means. They yeah. look at the word war, yeah. and they look at it as a you know, a group that is considering uh, things that uh, would be uh, not beneficial to the whole and without the knowledge of what we're even talking about. Yeah. Well, you know, there is some pending, I mean, some people are trying to put legislation forward that uh, would dictate what churches can say or, or they would, might lose their... Uh, tax exemption and uh, right, those types of things. So there's certain sins you can't really talk about from the pulpit anymore, or they're trying to curtail those. As Christianity, being... Christianity is under attack. There's no question. No, I, yeah. Oh. I, and the reason I bring that out, I'm saying it is, is that every week when I check that box, uh, I always expect <laughs> because uh, we're very open in what we say here. and I, I think we should be, but uh, I always know that every once in a while, I'm going to get that little note. They don't really eliminate it. They just let you know to not do it again. <laughs> and I, and, I go, and, okay. And the phrase <laughs> spiritual warfare was a problem. Yes. Oh, and I, we're saying it repeatedly here, so. <laughs> well, I've never brought it up. I'm not going to say it because I don't want anybody to quit saying anything, so. <clears throat> we'll keep copying and tell you know there's a, a, other people we could use to the recording for so if we ever get bumped from them uh we'll, we'll get another uh, you know uh as you read this uh dwight i one of the things that came to my mind is that you can drift into sin but not into righteousness and that is why we put on the armor of god i thought that summary would great yeah so there's some good point but yeah i i, I was uh, this was a what's well, a comp the, this commentary i i use and i think it's uh pretty great but i was just uh, ha had problem with what the that last paragraph there but uh, I'm sh sharing it anyway so you guys can see the different uh interpretations but uh, most of this was great stuff except for the it's kind of minimizing the Satan a little bit. So, so as uh, our lesson said, pray, pray passionately in the spirit as you constantly intercede with every form of prayer at all times. Pray the blessings of God upon all believers. So any updates on any of these uh, uh, prayer requests? Again, thank you, everybody. 
continued prayers. It's a slow recovery for Debbie. She's doing well, but uh, I appreciate the prayers. And Chase, I know she does too. Uh, I've never seen her read as what well, she, she's a faithful person. I won't <clears throat> take this wrong, but she has Jesus Calling, the book next to her all the time. She's reading that devotion every day and yeah, each day it goes along, which is great. I love that book. Uh, but there's a good thing that's happened. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, let's pray. Let's, uh, spend I have a quick phrase. Huh? And so my, I had shared that my daughter, Morgan, obviously her goal in life here for the next three years is to be a missionary in the Middle East. And she had to go through and do her fundraising. And then she ran into, you could say, some medical issues that she had to deal with. And But yesterday, she bought her ticket. And she will be going to the uh, Middle East, leaving on June 6th. Wow. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. So I guess that's a praise. And I would also ask for your prayers. Yeah. No, definitely. Her and even, you could say, uh, her mother and I. Yes. Okay. All right, let's uh, spend a few moments in prayer here. Um, Dearly Father, we're, we're so grateful that you've given us uh, this armor. And uh, uh, Father, we just ask that you uh, help us uh, remember to uh, to put it on and uh, uh, wear it um, proudly and in preparation for the the, the day and to uh, continue to, uh, to share your word uh, as we go out. Thank you, God. 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 Uh, from her accident, Father, we just ask that your uh, your Holy Spirit be active in this whole process and, and bring healing and comfort uh, as she uh, uh, finally comes to full restoration, which we know is your will and your blessing. We also lift up uh, Ken and his family and, and especially grateful that you've uh, blessed his daughter with this uh, mission you laid just upon her heart. And we know it's, it's, it's your will that... Uh, she be safe and protected and and that she goes on to uh, carry your message out into the uh, the world uh, which is all our calling but we're glad that she's fun she's taking up the full armor of god and and putting it on and moving forward so probably we just ask you to be with, be with her to be with uh, ken and his wife and that uh, they be be encouraged and and blessed uh, as they, they pray for her her journey and her mission. Uh, Father, we continue to, to lift up our, our nation and the people uh, of our country. Um, we just ask, Father, we, we, we pray for your intercession. We pray for revival. We pray for return to the, to the covenant that was our early settlers made with you, um, that we focus on you and that uh, we return to in your will we just father your intercession is needed this country's um, just uh, going to hell and, and uh, very so quickly so we ask uh, that you please come father we ask all these things in the name of yeshua how much do you amen amen thanks right thank you guys thank you Dwight. Thanks, Dwight. Thanks. have a good weekend yeah you too Okay. Oh,